Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to another Fry Q&A. Thanks for watching, thanks for sending in your questions and let's dive deeper into this week's questions. <coughs> I'm sorry I was a little bit late this week with posting the, uh, the post about where you could drop your questions but I kind of forgot it so that's why I just posted it this morning. But thanks to anyone, <coughs> anyone who did post their questions right there. Uh, we did manage to get some questions, so that's a good thing. To everyone who's not familiar with this concept, I will be doing a Fry Q&A every Friday where you can ask me your questions and I will post a video like this into the Artist Coaching Community Facebook group where you can get a reply to your questions. So if you have a question to me and if you aren't a member of the Artist Coaching Community group on Facebook, make sure to become a member and ask me your questions if you want to. So let's start off with the first one, which is from Maxime Bonnet. What do you think <coughs> what do you think about the new blockchain platform Tune by Garrett Emery? I'm not sure I'm I've actually never heard of it before, uh, so I can't really tell you anything about it. I do can tell you that I'm a big fan and a big believer uh, that the blockchain is gonna be a big thing. I'm not sure how it's gonna work out in the music though. I do see something happening with agreements and all those kind of things, but I think it's something we all need to figure out and we need to find a way to make it work, especially in the music industry for us. So yeah, like I said, <coughs> I'm a big believer in of the blockchain, but I'm just not sure uh, how it's gonna end up working in the music industry. So um, Dave, Dave Eric Fuentes. Not sure if this has already been covered before, but what are the benefits of outsourcing mix and mastering, especially for up and coming producers who want to make it into the industry? Outsourcing mix and mastering. I actually did a, did a video about this a few weeks ago. Um, outsourcing your mix or mastering isn't really a bad thing. To me, you have to see those things separately, like mixing and mastering are two completely different things, in my opinion. Um, the mixing part, I would try to take care of that part yourself because I believe it's still a part of your signature sound. So if you're able to create a, a clean mix yourself, try to do it yourself. But the mastering is definitely something I would outsource because you're just so into depth into the project and you just can't really hear the details anymore. It's just good to have someone listening to the track with a, flip, with a fresh set of ears. Uh, with all the knowledge about mastering that he needs, with a decent room he needs for the mastering. Um, and the mastering doesn't really hurt your sound overall, so I believe you should outsource your mastering and try to do the mixing yourself. Mm. <coughs> Next one's from Yoshi Jack, I think, Jack. When I mix, uh, each channel in my mixer is green, but my stereo output is in red. Any tips that my stereo output can be green? I would say put the faders more down, but my track is too quiet. I work with Logic Pro X. Uh, well, Yashi, I'm not sure what the problem is, but I think what you mean uh, is that you do have to put the faders down. If you still have all the faders into the greens, all those uh, separate channels will add up and will create an even louder dB on the end master. So, even if it's still too loud, <coughs> too loud on the master, I would select all those tracks and take them down together, or you just put a, a, a gain plugin on the mastering channel and take it down a few knots there. So I really think that's the problem. Um, but yeah, like I said, I haven't seen your project. I'm not sure what you, what you mean, but if that's the thing that I read right now, it's just a matter of putting the volumes down. And don't worry about the fact that you're <coughs> that your tracks low in volume because that's gonna be fixed in the mastering. Um, Toby Was says, how do I promote my tracks the best way on Spotify without paying for it? Well Toby, um, that ac that's actually all about networking and making sure, <coughs> making sure that you know people who own Spotify playlist and who are able to or are willing to support you actually. Um, I really think that if you get featured in a Spotify owned playlist, so a playlist that is owned by Spotify itself, you will never have to pay for that. And those are most of the times the biggest ones. 
like mint and stuff um, but if you find another playlist like a third party playlist so let's say uh, you find a blog who owns a playlist with 20,000 followers and you would like to get featured in that that's probably gonna cost you some money because they have built awareness on that group and they are aware of the fact that they have a big reach so they would like to see something in return for posting your track um, <coughs> my advice to you start focusing on the Spotify owned playlists um, and just make sure that your tracks are really good try it also what could really help if you're not able to do it yourself to to reach out to those uh, playlist owners try to find a label who does have that connection because if you don't have it yourself try to find it elsewhere and there are a lot of labels who are in good contact with a lot of those uh, with a lot of those playlist owners and I would definitely think that could be a great st <coughs> strategy um, <coughs> Nicholas Skuta says how can I find a booking agent well that's simple I wouldn't find any booking agent, I would just wait until they come to you. Because a booking agent will probably only be interested if he can make money on your back, if he can build you to a bigger career and if he can make money on you. And you're only interested if you're able to make him money. If you want to make him money you have to be a bigger DJ, like a bigger name, a bigger brand out there. So if you're big, those guys will come to you. And I think that's the great, the best way to do it. I, w I wouldn't go out and search for a good bookings agent because if there's a good bookings agency who is interested in you, he would have already approached you. And Labinot asks, where can I watch the answers from last Q&A? Well, Labinot, I post a video like this <coughs> into this group, in the Artist Coaching Community Facebook group, but also on my page and I transferred into a, a podcast as well. So it doesn't really matter where you, where you listen or watch uh, the answers they're everywhere actually so um guys thanks again for sending in your tracks i will be back next week with a brand new fry q a uh, let me know if you need anything else i will be available on facebook and on instagram so reach out to me right there if you have a question for me or just wait until next week uh, by the way guys i want to ask you something if you really like listening to podcasts go to the itunes store find the artist coaching podcast and click subscribe it will mean the world to me Thanks guys, have a good weekend and I'll see you next week.